So we are going to talk about calorie tracking. Now, if you are one of the few people that tracks their calories, chances are you are not doing it accurately. I'm going to explain why. Now, first things first, people are notoriously poor at tracking their calories, and this has been shown across a number of studies. For example, in one study of weight loss resistant individuals, they over reported the number of calories they burned by 51% and under reported the number of calories they ate by 47%. However, let's pretend for a moment that you are Mr. or Mrs. Meticulous. Every single thing that you eat, you look at the nutritional information, you weigh it, and you plug it into MyFitnessPal. Chances are you are still not doing this perfectly, and I'm going to explain why. So first things first, your starting point on your weight loss journey, your caloric formula. This is not a perfect science. Caloric equations vary depending on things like age, ethnicity, and body composition. So ideally, you will pair the caloric equation to suit your personal circumstances, not the same caloric equation that everyone else uses. For example, one study that compared four caloric formulas showed that the most accurate formula still had a margin of error of 10%. So your starting point on the weight loss journey already isn't perfect. If it says you need 2,500 calories per day, already there's a margin of error within that. However, let's pretend for a moment that that is still perfectly accurate. That is exactly the number of calories you need to consume. There is going to be a massive margin of error on everything else you do. For example, the food that you eat. There is a natural variance of nutritional information on the food that you eat. For example, in America, the FDA gives you a 20% margin of error in each direction. So if you look on the back and it says it has 100 grams of carbs per serving, that could be anything from 80 to 120 grams of carbs. This is also the same in restaurant food items. They are not going to be perfectly precise. For example, one 2010 study that looked at restaurant food items showed that the biggest discrepancy was double the number of calories that were on the menu. That means if it says it's got 200 calories, that could be anything up to 400 calories. This is just things like the person serving the food could give you a slightly larger scoop or use a little bit more oil when they're cooking or anything like that. So even if you are weighing and tracking everything perfectly, there is going to be variation in the food that you eat. But what about the calories you burn? Now, on a day-to-day -day basis, the amount that you will move will vary. So whether you go to the gym or not, this is something that people are going to take into consideration if they're being really good. So they might say, oh, I'm going to the gym on that day, so I'm going to account for an extra 400 calories because that's what it estimates for my running or whatever they're doing. But outside of the gym, there's still going to be a variation in how many calories you burn. Non-exercise activity thermogenesis can account for a tenfold difference in fat storage. So even if you completely forget about how many calories you burn in the gym, the amount you move outside of the gym will still be hugely different. For example, did you walk around more that day? Did you work from home? Did you sit on the sofa watching the TV at the weekend? So the amount of calories you burn on a daily basis will, of course, fluctuate. So for most people, if they use the same caloric formula every single day, it is going to fluctuate from day to day. But let's pretend for a moment that you have gone one step further and you've got an activity tracker. These still have a large margin of error. For example, one study that looked at the accuracy of activity trackers showed that the biggest discrepancy in total daily energy expenditure, total calories burned, was still off by about a third, 898 calories. So it might say that you've burnt 3,000 calories, but in reality, you might have burned just over 2,000. This is potentially a huge discrepancy. Now, you might be watching this and think, what is the fucking point? Caloric formulas aren't accurate. The food nutritional information that I'm eating might not be accurate. The number of calories I'm burning might not be accurate, even if I'm tracking it on my sexy, snazzy, expensive watch. Here is the reason why. Tracking your calories has been shown across a number of studies to highly associate with better weight loss outcomes. For example, one study showed that people who track their calories highly, the high monitors, had greater weight loss than the low monitors. Not only that, but the high monitors lost more weight on their weeks where they were doing it badly than the low monitors did on their best weeks. So yes, there is a massive amount of guesswork in all of this. It is far, far, far from a perfect science, but it is the best guesswork we have. And tracking your calories still gives people extra accountability and likely means that they make better food choices when they write or record things down. 
So yes, it is not perfect, but it can still be a very, very valuable tool for weight loss. So that's it. I hope it's helped. Thank you.